Good afternoon, it's Rachel here and I am day, uh, here with day, I've got all this mess on my table, day um, 98 and today is inspired by bees. Now I thought I'd do, last year I did a bee project in, um, in the 100 day project. This is, um, was requested by Kathleen and Berry Hill Bees. And so what I thought I would do is I bought Mrs. Cog's bee, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called, just a minute, I printed it on fabric. Here we go, the Busy Bee, it's called, um, Mrs. Cog's Craft. And I printed on fabric exactly the same way as I printed uh, Lulu on fabric. Um, and I used the same piece of bodgy paper that I showed you in that video, and it was still sticky, and this stuck on, and it printed very, very well in my HP printer. So I've cut out the image, and I love this image here. Look how well it printed on the on the fabric. I've got a piece of um, just old linen here that's been um, put in some sort of dye, and then um, so I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna make a piece. That all could be like a, I'm sorry, the people are still drilling the ones from yesterday. Um, I thought, or I will, um, this could be, go on a cover of a journal, I thought. Um, and, um, wait, I'll just get my pins over here. Um, yeah, so I thought this could go on the cover of a journal, or it could be like a flip in a journal as well. Pretty elaborate to be a flip. But anyway, I've got this piece of old hemp that I'd just thrown in some, I think it was the written rip dye I think I need to move that up a little bit um, but I had uh, really only put a few drops of the dye in um, the water because I um, I'll move that down sorry because I didn't um, want it to be too strong the color and then I've got queen bee here which I thought would be cool I'm going to be doing hand stitching, so I warn you, if you don't like watching hand stitching, this is not the video for you. You could um, you could um, machine stitch, but I like the hand stitching more. And I thought I would put this here. I didn't know whether, I think I'll put it behind. And I think I'm going to have it overhanging, because I like things to overhang. Let's just see. So I did kind of, I did kind of organise myself a little bit today, because I thought otherwise... Um, I can't have everything, you know, I want to choose from so many different things. I can't have everything here on my table. And I thought it would, and you know, the stitching is going to take long enough. So that's kind of my composition here. Right. So what I'm going to do is very quickly, very quickly, um, stitch these in place. I've got, my, I've got my thread here. I've got my embroidery flosses as well. And I may not, like if I see anything's taking too long, um, I may not uh, video at all. But what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to, well, maybe I won't stitch that down. I'm just very quickly going to just do some very little stitches here and just jump across. And it's. I'm just going to go around the border. It will take me not too long, I don't think. Oh, well, it will if I get tangled in in threads. It'll take me a long time. Um, so I'm just going to go around the, the edge of it and just quickly tack it. It's kind of like tacking, but it's invisible tacking. You can't see it. And I will capture that. I'll just come along here. So you just do these teeny tiny little stitches and jump forward as far as you can go with your needle. I wish those people would stop that. They were doing that on a Sunday and they're not even allowed to do that on a Sunday. I don't know what they're doing. I've had to close my window. There's a lovely breeze, but it's just so unbearable listening to it. It's drive, actually driving me bananas. I might have to go back in the other room because I couldn't hear it. Right. So I'm just, I'm not even going to go right up to the top there. I'm actually going to come across over here. So I capture this as well because I am going to stitch around, um, you know, the other one as well with embroidery floss. So um, am I? 
Now I'm questioning myself. So I hope everybody is well today. Um, I'm still giggling about the, the police office closing <laughs> for lunch. Our friend is here from Modena, one of our best friends. Um, he was at uni with Steffi in Florence and he actually went out with my cousin for many years and well, she was living in Florence with me. Um, and it's his 50th birthday today. Happy birthday, Mo. Um, anyway, he, um, I was telling him and he was like, no, that's not possible. That doesn't happen. Well, maybe it doesn't happen. I don't know. Maybe it just happened there. Who knows? However, one of um, you lovely ladies told me that when you were in Rome and you had your wallet stolen, you went there to the police at four o'clock in the afternoon and they told you they were shut. So I don't understand how a police station can be shut. It's just funny to me. Although maybe they do. Maybe there's a bigger one. There must be like other ones that are open. That's all I can think. Don't know. I'm not going to go right across. I'm going to come around the corner. See, this is why this is quite quick to do this. And no, these stitches will just be left in because you can't see them. Well, not really. They just stay in. You don't have to take them out. It is kind of doing the work twice, but it's just a, like I just want to get the, the pins out because they, they get in my way. Let me check if I'm on screen. Oh, yes, I am on screen, I think. If I don't move the, the arm, then I tend to be able to stay on screen pretty much. Unless I get, you know, sometimes I get pushed off by the stuff on my table. That happens. Okay, I need a new thread. I do like these colours. You see how quick this is? So you don't need a sewing machine. You can do it by hand. It's actually very relaxing. Like you'd be doing this sitting watching the TV. You don't have to have much with you. Just have your threads and sit and stitch while you watch TV. You don't even have to think about it because there's nothing fancy happening here at the moment. And you just sit and stitch away. Happy as can be. Oh, I'm so sorry about the drilling. It's, they're the pe it's the house out the back. It's a bit like the dentist on steroids, isn't it? Listening to the, you know, the dentist drill, I should say, not the dentist himself, but the, the actual drill on steroids. Oh, we probably need to go to the dentist to have a checkup and a teeth clean, but I don't know how that all works now. I guess they wear the big, they wore visors anyway, um, and masks, so I guess it doesn't change much for them. Okay. Right. Don't know if I'll be able to part with this. I could make it again. Not hard to make. Now they're throwing things. 
beautiful day outside today it's hot but not too hot it's below 30 i think there's, and it's like there's no humidity that i mean normally we are melting we had a little bit over the weekend but yeah normally we're melting at this point and um touch wood it hasn't come yet i mean it's hot but it hasn't the really bad humidity hasn't come yet so i haven't had any migraines have had a few headaches but not migraines because the humidity makes makes me have migraines I'm just gonna cut those off they're a bit messy okay good right now what's next could embroider a bee there I would have to go and get my special fabric marker for that well I can do that because I probably won't I won't film every single second because it'll take forever. Just sitting here having a think about it for a second. So I was thinking I could do like, I think, oh yes, I think I'll do that. Although I need, I need my marker. Okay, I'm going to put it on pause for a second and I'll get my marker. There's going to be a few pauses, I think. Well, first maybe we'll work on that and then I'll pause it so I don't have too many pauses. That's a good idea. So I'm going to get my blues. Am I going to do blue? No, not blue. What am I talking about? I think I'm going to do... Maybe I'll do this colour. No. Or maybe... What about a... What kind of yellows do I have? Oh, I like this colour. That colour. Oh, there's my little thing. I was looking for that. Good thing I've got quite a few of those because I stock up on them whenever I see them because they're very hard to find. Well, here in Italy, you can't find them. Well, we actually don't have really, we have like um, haberdashery stores, but not really any specialised sewing stores. And they certainly don't have Japanese clover products, that's for sure. If you wanted to, you could embroider over Queen Bee, but I actually quite like that. So I'm going to leave that. And I'm just thinking I'm going to running stitch around the blue. I've got three threads here. Yeah, maybe I'll put that on. I don't really need it, but I'll put it on. It's not that thick. Um, actually, no, I think I'm going to go around this. I'm not going to go around the blue at all. I'm just going to do a little, keep it as little as possible, running stitch here. It's a bit like quilting. Try to be as... I'm never, I don't usually do very even stitches. My sister does perfect, perfectly even stitches. She's amazing. She's fallen off the bandwagon. She's fallen off. She's gone. She's lost her mojo. Hopefully she'll be back one day to see us. But she's very busy. I'll tell you why she's lost her mojo, because her son's about to go off with the school for a while. And um, my nephew, and she's very busy organising him. So, um, and probably feeling a bit sad because he's going to be gone for a little while. Doing outward bound sort of stuff, which is really cool. I'm sure he'll have a fantastic time. I must say, if you do slightly more even stitches, it does look, look nice. Another option, if you don't want to see all the stitching, even though I'm going to cut out some of it, not this, this is not going to take that long, um, is you can fast forward it. You can you can put it on, um, uh, you can, you know, be in the area where all the different options are on the video, um, when you have it on your screen, there's an option to watch it double time or something like that. I haven't figured out how to fast forward, and then I'd have to put that bodgy music on um, and I actually don't enjoy fast forwarded videos as much I like to see it real time 
and if I get bored I just fast forward a little bit and or otherwise I just do other stuff it gives you the opportunity to sit and do stuff um, while the video is on just sit and do stuff and then you look up every so often and then you you catch what's next that's what I do anyway and as I go I'm thinking I want to stitch around Mrs. Cog's image. I do like this yellow. It's a mustardy yellow. I really do like it. Um, I'm thinking, what do I want to do around the other? I don't want to do anything too obvious around, because um, I've got this other idea around the main image. So I've just knotted that. I think I'm going to leave that as is. I don't want to put anything, and I'll line that little bit there that's popping up. Or actually, if it were to glue down, you could just glue it. Now I'm thinking, what would do I want to do around here? I could just do a running stitch again because I want to do something here. So I don't want to have too much fussiness going around there. I think what I'll do is just a little um, overcast stitch or whip stitch show you what that looks like and I think I'm just going to do it in a beigey colour um, because I don't want it to stand out too much and I'm just wondering do I want a colour like maybe a bit paler than that colour like that or do I want a colour like that no I think there we go I've answered my own question this one love this colour too this is a uh, DMC six. It's, I mean, I just use quite. A, I mostly use these sorts of threads, but sometimes I use wools and stuff. Um, this is just the six strand thread. And here, I'm going to use. How many have I got here? I've got four. I think I'll use two. It also makes your thread last longer if you separate them. I like to separate mine in the middle. I know a lot of people uh, recommend that you separate each thread and then put them back together. I don't. I just pull them out in the middle because they tend to tangle less, a bit less. Um, and uh, and then I just sort of, I'll show you what I do, I just thread it first. I sort of run my hands down and my nails down and just sort of um, even it out so there's no lumpy bits or anything like that. Okay, so here... I'm just going to do this tiny stitch. I'm not going to do it too big. I don't want, and I'm going to do it quite close together. So I'll do a little bit. See how how close. Now what I do to save thread is the normal thing is to come from here down to there. Um, what I do, and then you come back up here and down, up there and down like that. But what I do is I come up next to my stitch. See, I've come up next to it, and I'll just show you what the back looks like. The back has just a little row of stitches there. Um, and you save. Your thread lasts so much longer that way. And I figured that one out. Nobody taught me that, but I know lots of... I've seen other people do it. I actually saw, saw in the course that I did from Charlotte Lyons. Um, she, she does it like that too. And I had... My aunt had given me a beautiful piece of a, an antique um, Japanese fabric that had um, beautiful... I think I've got a piece somewhere. I don't know where I've put it. Um, it has beautiful silk embroidery. And it's all these flowers and blossoms. It's really, really pretty. Um, and I looked at the back. Oh, on the back, I could not see any stitches. So they do them really, they do them this way, super tiny, super tiny stitches. When they do um, uh, even satin stitch, which is when you fill it in, you could not see any stitches on the back. Like literally, well, there might have been a thin line of stitches. That was it. Um, and, and I figured out that they must come up next to their stitch instead of um, going up and down, if you know what I mean. So, for example, I'll show you the normal way is to go down here and come back up here like that. So this is the normal way. And I'll show you what it looks like on the back in a second. I'll do a few so you can see. And that's what that's the normal way and so then you get this at the back whereas what I'm doing is I'm getting this little row of stitches and I'm saving on thread by coming up next to it like so 
yeah so my aunt gave me that beautiful piece and um and i just looked at it and i thought how did they do that then it occurred to me that they do this but they must do it like super tiny so i'll do a little bit more and then i'll go off i'll finish it and then i'll come back and i'll get my um my fabric pen that disappears with water okay so around we go and I really like how that's looking okay so I'll be back in a minute and um, and then we'll continue on see you soon okay so I'm back I went all the way around uh, this big piece here and I got this and I've just drawn, not that one, not that one, this one. I've drawn with my erasable, water erasable pen, just a little bit around here. And I've drawn a B in there. Okay, so this is my plan. I'm going to get a blue, I think. Um, which blue am I going to get? Uh, probably... Not that blue. Not that blue. Not that blue too bright. You know me and the decision making process, what it's like. No, I'm just not finding the right one, am I? They're all coming out now. That one. Okay. I'll fix those up after. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch. I'm going to use three threads. One, two. Oh, that's three there. See? They, just, they do get a bit tangled sometimes, but not, not as bad as if you start from one end and pull them out. Right, so we'll do, we'll thread our needle. Get our knot, put your tail down. You need, that's the point. Wrap it around a few times and then just carefully, well, yeah, carefully pull it down to the end and you've created your knot. It was a bit of a messy knot, but it doesn't matter. And I'm not going to go around this um, with running stitch. I'm going to do three satin stitches but, and not close together. I don't know if you can see that just three stitches next to each other and I'll come across leave a space and then come across to the next one it probably won't be perfect but I'll do my best Just to create a little bit of um, texture and interest in the work. So it's not all the same. And you also want to think about the order in which you do things. Like things that you want to be behind, you do those first. Things that you want to be on the top, you do those after. And I'm always um, coming up next to my stitch. Where I go down, I come up next to it. So I'm saving my thread. Okay. 
It really is fun to print these images on fabric and do things like this for in a journal. Obviously, um, I know I say it every time, but there are new subscribers. Um, welcome to everybody. I never welcome anyone, but you are all welcome, of course. Um, but I always just get straight into it, don't I? Um, I've obviously printed this on an inkjet printer. So it's not um, color fast in the sense it could fade over time. Um, and certainly if you wet it, it'd be like, you know, the color will run and disappear just like it would on paper. Um, but I was thinking I'm, I will, if I, I will probably put this on the front of something. Um, well, even regardless whether I decided to put it in a journal or on the cover of a journal, I would spray it with hairspray or one of those fixatives, you know, artist fixatives sprays. Um, and I think that if you do that, it'll be pretty good, especially with the artist one. But they're not ch that cheap. I have some, but it's, and I do use it um, for my covers sometimes, um, for the images that I'm putting on the covers. Um, but I think hairspray is a good fixative as well. So obviously I've got my um, water soluble pen on here. I'm actually just going to leave it. I'm not going to wet it because um, otherwise my, I didn't think about that. My image will disappear. So where it's on the image, I wouldn't wet it. But I think over time it'll just fade out. So I'm just working around the circle that I drew, or well, the part of a circle because I did it on purpose that it went off the piece and you could really have a lot of fun like you could go in and embroider details of the flowers and um, it could really become an elaborate piece So, yep, three stitches next to each other, leave a space, and then do another set of three. Nearly there. Hopefully my battery's not going flat. I haven't charged my phone today. And I'm not like being too careful that they're evenly spaced. I'm not worried about that. I don't think that's such an issue. I'm hoping I'll make it to the edge with this one thread, but I think that's wishful thinking. I might make it. No, I've got, I've probably got two more sets to do. Or one let's see I could do one I don't think I can do two I'm gonna keep on going I'm gonna try so I made it round with one thread Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to do my B, and I'm going to use. I think I'll use this yellow that I used before, or will I use, and I might use a paler version of it, so it's not too bright. And rather than using, like, I guess we'd probably think black for the darker part of the bee, I'm thinking I'm going to use, just tidying up my mess a bit, 
a dark brown because I prefer dark brown to, to black. I'm going to use that colour. Well, they're all dark brown, so there you go. Now, I'm going to use more threads for this, will I? No, just three. I've got three here already. So I'll just show you how I'm going to approach this. I'll do a little bit of the B and then I'll stop the video because it'll take me a minute to do it. So I've drawn my B, you can hardly see it here, and I've got the sections. So I'm actually going to do satin stitch, but very loose. Satin stitch is where you fill it in, but very loose. I don't want to, I don't want it to be a tight satin stitch. I don't know if that makes sense. It's just going to be loose and a bit messy. That's the look I'm going for. And as you can see, I'm coming up next to where I went down. If I come up too far away, I'll just I just go back and put another stitch in. Yep, three strands are enough. Okay, I'm going to end that one off. I'll tell you what colour DMC this one is in a second if I've got it on there. I think I do. This one is 676. Sometimes um, um, they discontinue colours because my threads are very old because, as I've mentioned before, my mum gave me a lot of these. Um, and so sometimes they've discontinued and they have a similar one with a different number because that's happened. Uh, when I was doing projects uh, with my sister for Homespun magazine, uh, I would have to give them, you know, the threads that I used for the embroidered bits and... Quite often they'd come back to me and say, can we substitute it with this one? That one's been discontinued. And so that's why I'm just saying that. So you, it's kind of like a, a buttery yellow, this one. And I have used quite a lot of Mrs. Cog's kits, haven't I, in these last videos. It's because she has some lovely um, themed kits that are perfect um, if you have a special theme to do. So I wasn't going to, I wanted to do my brown first, but I don't have other needles here. So I might as well keep this one going for a minute. Until I finish the thread and then I'll move on to the brown and then I'll come back. See, now with the... Um, so if I if I'd done the normal way, come up, come across here, come back over here, over there, over there, like that, um, it would all be filled in the back as well. Whereas going coming up next to your stitch, you can see it's not filled in the back, and so you've saved all of that thread. Mm, I think I want to do my brown first because I can't see my lines very well with the um, patterned blue fabric behind. Okay, so here I've got them because I quite often only use two. Um, so these are in twos, but I, I want to keep on with the threes. So I'll just grab, pull that thread out, and I'll put three together. They'll be different lengths because I think I've used some of them. Yep. Okay, so let me just trim off the difference in length. Okay, so here I'm going to do the top of the bee, the head. 
can hardly see where I've done my drawing, but it doesn't matter, we'll work it out. Put this as fun for a change. Now, why am I having so much trouble here? They're all different lengths. Oh my goodness, we don't need this, do we? I can guarantee you it's driving me as bananas as it's driving you guys. Talk about a headache. Okay. Back in action. Oh, and I just drew the B, B freehand. There was nothing too tricky about it. And I'm just adding stitches until I feel like it's got sort of right. And I've got some antennas here that I've drawn on. And I'm just going to do those with back stitch. I'll just jump across there and do that one. Okay. Okay, and then I've got to do another section of the darker color here. So I'll continue on with this and then I'll just pause the video and then I'll come back once the bee is done and we'll see if it needs anything else. So I'll see you in a second. Bye. Okay, so I'm back. I finished um, embroidering my little bee and I'm thinking this is nearly done. I'm just, my last thing that I was wondering about was uh, do I want to put any uh, sort of lace on there? Or behind it or something like that so I'm just gonna grab I'm just grabbing a few bits and pieces I think that's too white that needs to go in some coffee dime and oh, no I like to use those on the spine of books those ones um, let's just see I've got this piece here but I don't really like that Not that one. Um, do I want to stitch any of that on there? I don't think so. So probably not. Could do a little ruffle here, but I think that's a bit new compared to everything else that I've got. So I think that's pretty much done. So that uh, could go on to the cover. Let me see if I've got an old book here. 
Here's an old book. This one really needs some repair, but and it's a bit small, but yeah, my thoughts were it could go on the cover and you could have, um, I wouldn't cover up that spine because it's leather. Um, obviously on a bigger book, but yeah, that was the idea. It could be um, on the cover of a journal. So I will, I will spray that to protect it, just especially this part here. And, um, and then it's ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed that. Again, Mrs. Cog, the Busy Bee, I think it's called. Um, and yeah, just a bit of hand stitching. If you wanted to go faster, you could machine stitch around all those bits. Um, and then if you wanted to embroider a bee, or you could put a stamped bee on there would be nice as well. So you don't have to embroider it if you don't want to. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's the back. And um, I will see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.